I'm going to rush through this just to say that um, uh, a lot of our thinking about landscape came into uh, our work at Lincoln Center, which was originally almost entirely about the public realm and the public space and, and grew over time to include architecture uh, and uh, new buildings there. Uh, these are the different projects. These are all the people involved in the project. It was pretty complex. Um, we're almost finished. Um, it was seven years in the making. Um, yeah, seven, seven years of the making. Um, my, uh, you lose track of time when you're having so much fun. Um, anyway, this is the old bridge on 65th Street. Horrific, uh, anti-city, um, uh, was the first thing to go. Um, the beautiful brutalist building, actually one of the best examples of brutalism in the city, uh, yet so inhospitable and uninviting um, that one of our primary motivations with the entire renovation was to turn the, turn the whole complex inside out using glass and uh, let, letting people um, see in to the insides, but also to uh, see in in a supernatural way into the insides through um, the use of media and technology. Um, this is the addition to the Juilliard School that we completed, plus the new lobby for Alice Tully Hall. It's the first time that um, part of Lincoln, the part of the innards of Lincoln Center were ever exposed to the city, and it's also the first time that the Juilliard School had any parts, um, any of its activities revealed. Sort of like you know, it was. It's such a sacred institution uh, and sort of turned in on itself uh, like a monastery uh, that this was about uh, turning turning its program inside out and, and sh showing it off and give, giving a little bit of it back to New York. Um, this is Tully Plaza, uh, which flows seamlessly um, from, from outside to in. Same stone, same levels. The elevation was fixed, so we couldn't change it. Then a new bar and cafe that we suggested to uh, Lincoln Center they um, thought was a great idea. Um, and then the hall itself was uh, renovated uh, entirely, um, uh, though the shape of the hall uh, was um, uh, maintained. Uh, the, the finish and all of the, uh, the, the sculpting um, was based on acoustics um, and, and making the hall sound better. Um, you know, these are, this is just random assortment of some of the things we've done up there. This is the new entrance to, to uh, Juilliard, also kind of landscape of sorts that can be inhabited. Um, uh, Juilliard's entrance had been on, on the ground floor um, uh, or had been planned for the ground floor before the Milstein Bridge went in. Uh, so, so we were sort of bringing back an original feature. Um, and here's the North Plaza in its barren state before the, um, the renovation. It's Dan Kiley landscape, um, but uh, taking out the bridge uh, opened up the plaza too much and took, a, took its serenity away. So we decided to um, suggest that we make a restaurant, a new pavilion here. So this is the Lincoln restaurant, which is topped by a, a hyperbolic paraboloid um, lawn um, that serves as its roof and also serves as, as Juilliard's um, sort of commons. Um, this is sort of giving it, giving something of this um, space back to the public and back to the Juilliard kids. Uh, and while um, down below is, is a restaurant that charges $110 a head, um, the uh, top is absolutely free. Um, and if you eat grass, if you're a cow, you could just, I don't, I don't know. Uh, that was really bad. Um, anyway, the feeling up there is very fun, and somebody, somebody remarked that it's a little like the High Line. I mean, it's, it's chopped and lifted. Um, it gives you a really interesting point of view. You can actually finally see into the Met, which you could never do before. It's just high enough that you look into the offices. Um, and it just, it feels like a, like a little pastoral landscape, smack in the middle of Lincoln Center. It's really, it's really kind of, kind of um, nice. Um, the entrance we changed up. There had been, you know, loads of traffic. Uh, there are two lanes of traffic up above. Uh, once you get out of your car, the stair was mean and, and, and steep and pockmarked. Uh, there were Jersey barriers. Um, so we tried to sort of redignify the entrance by burying the drop-off road underneath a new set of grand stairs. There you see it. We added uh, gla two glass canopies. Um, oh my God, I think Rick photoshopped out the structure. Um, there are two columns, but only two. There's one there and there's one here. Can, looks like he put people, I, I, he's not here to defend himself, but it looks like he, this is, a, this is like when you, sometimes you do this for a competition, right? You sort of like, you know, hocus pocus, you know, no structure. And um, <laughs> uh, anyway, so, but there are columns. And there's, but there's one, only one column for each canopy. They're 85 feet long. Uh, they were transported on a, on a, on, on a, um, 
flatbed truck and um, during the middle of the night we had to close several lanes of uh, the George Washington Bridge um, to bring them in. We also remade the stairs, um, the, the front um, uh, risers of the stairs now have LED in them and uh, they, they operate as sort of the marquee for the Lincoln Center. It's, it's something that's never really had a front door, an imaging system, a way to say what was going on. Um, so it's, it's, it's the welcome mat in a way. Um, we also remade the fountain. We worked with wet design on that. Um, I should say we worked with FXFAL and, uh, and, and uh, uh, BB&B on this project. We couldn't have done it without either of those firms. Um, they were instrumental in, um, in, in making this all happen. Um, uh, we worked with wet design to, to re-image um, and reimagine the, the fountain in the middle um, and took some of its attributes, the, the, the diameter, um, you know, the fact that it wants to be a, a seat um, and, um, and kept those, but we changed the way the, the fountain um, works, um, fl floating the, the stone off of the ground, supporting it on just a few points, um, and lowering the water surface down to the, the plaza level. Um, so the stone just flows right into the water. Um, and you can see one of the effects that wet uh, made for us. It's happy. You have to go there at the, exactly the right time. There's actually a performance schedule. It's a little like the Bellagio, um, which is sort of not what we wanted, but but um, but it's fun and you can, you, know, it's, you can watch these people, you know, looking and go, well, continuing to watch this fountain. I'm like, ah, it's just water, but um, it's fun and um, and they did a great job. Um, we also um, did a little something for Fashion Week up there um, and. Um, sort of again sort of playing with uh, you know just sort of st stripping away what whatever uh, you, you your preconceptions of, of what things might be um, it's a, a giant monolith seemingly unsupported um, uh, and that this is not a Photoshop job uh, Rick did not take the columns out um, it actually has two giant beams uh, that that go behind and into the tents of Fashion Week um, but they're completely hidden by the tents themselves and you can't see them from the inside. So it's a pretty pretty um, great little uh, trump loy. And it's also a trump loy in terms of the material which is printed as travertine. So um, it, it appears to be, um, look mono hands, I'm a travertine block um, until you get right up uh, close to it and you see that the material um, actually comes down and is stretched around this mannequin um, and in fact is um, is all all fabric and uh, um, and printed uh, on the fabric is, is the pattern of travertine that was sampled from Lincoln Center from the Juilliard building um, in a non repeated there's no repeats so you can't tell that it's um, well you can tell that it's not travertine when you see it wrapped around a, a bust The last project is, um, is uh, a fun thing that we're doing in Washington. Um, uh, one of the most staid, um, you know, s ceremonial spaces in, uh, in, in America is, is also one of its most highly regulated spaces, of course. Um, um, amazing that um, either the East Wing or the Hirshhorn Museum could, could be made at all, uh, but there it is, uh, Gordon Bunshaft's um, what I would call master, one of his masterpieces, I think, uh, sitting um, like a proud donut on the south uh, edge of the um, of the lawn uh, of of the mall. Um, it's a very closed system, and and uh, they found themselves sort of being outpaced by their peer institutions in, in their ability to attract uh, varied shows and to host events, um, to put galas on. Um, and, and to essentially just expand their programming. But they knew that it was going to be difficult to expand in any kind of permanent way, and so they opted uh, to have us think about um, a way that it could be expanded um, in a permanent temporary fashion. So, um, so we did, and you know, here's, the, here's the atrium. Uh, absolutely no lobby space, uh, re really not, um, not it, doesn't pres it doesn't have the, uh, the ancillary spaces that a contemporary museum needs to be sustainable economically. Um, so we started thinking about inflate structures, and um, I guess that that's, seems um, pretty, pretty natural these days. Um, and then we started thinking about all the opportunities presented by the museum itself and its little donut hole, um, and, um, and, and decided to make um, an inflate structure uh, that pokes right out of the hole 
Um, it's, it'll happen uh, two times a year for one month at a time. Um, um, that's um, sort of what it is like looking like a little bibendum uh, Michelin man um, sort of taken over the, the, uh, the thing. But have no fear because after October it'll be down and it'll be the same old Hirshhorn. So um, this is a temporary sort of exuberance that, that uh, uh, tax and like, you know, sort of like a, a herniated disc, it sort of oozes out. Um, <laughs> Under, under the donut and in a sort of more transparent part, which is a cafe. Um, uh, th these are things that Her Hirshhorn doesn't have now. Um, and then um, the, the atrium itself is quite a large space in the end um, and will allow for um, um, you know, many people to witness uh, programming that they are current or, or for, for them to provide programming that they can't uh, now, uh, such as uh, performance events. Um, change the appearance of the from the galleries into the atrium which is kind of a fun thing so it's really celebratory and theatrical um, um, you know could, could be used for showing movies or for even site-specific um, works of art um, um, and we made this little model and uh, and and there it is and I think that's that's all I have for you tonight thank you